With 100 gigabit ethernet, 25 gig ethernet, not just redundant power supplies, but four different ways to power this low power switch, this might be one of the coolest switches you're going to see. There's a ton here, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Microtik CRS510 AXS2XQIN. This is a lower port count 25 gig and 100 gig Microtik switch that I think a lot of folks would think is pretty interesting. Now this is pretty embarrassing, but we totally missed the switch. I went a couple days ago to look up the power numbers and just kind of see what we got. And when I looked at it, I tried finding the review and I couldn't find it. On the STH main site, we did an announcement piece for this, but we never did a review. So we purchased one so we could do a review and complete our set. I just want to say a quick thank you to the STH YouTube members who are supporting us to be able to go buy this switch. If you do want to help us buy these things so we can review them independently, feel free to join down below. And as you're going to guess, since I really like the CRS504, which is this bottom one, because that one we have purchased probably 10 of at this point, and also the CRS518, which is the higher port count version of this, as you might imagine, I really do like the switch. And so well, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's talk about this switch and let's make life really easy for some folks. Uh, so the reason that I have two switches here is not because this is a two switch stack. Instead, it's really just because these switches are very similar. Both of them have redundant power supplies. We also have a number of high speed ports, Plus we have a number of power options. But overall, if you see nothing else, I just wanted to point out that these are almost identical switches. The biggest difference is actually the interfaces and how they're physically presented. Also, we're gonna quickly note that we do have the rubber feet on these because they come with rubber feet and they can be used as desktop switches, but they also have rack mount ears that you can use to rack mount them, of course. Okay, so let's talk about one of the most interesting things before we get to the networking side of this. Let's just talk about the box itself. So first thing that you're probably gonna notice is that you have front mounted power supplies and these front mounted power supplies are redundant. You can simply pop the little latch and then you can pull out the 60 watt power supply. And as you might imagine, a 25 and 100 gig switch with 60 watt power supplies means that this is a very low power switch. We'll get to that in our power testing. But on the other hand, let's go look over on this side over here. So the first thing you're gonna see over here is that you do get a DC input. You can use a standard DC power brick and uh, just go power this thing. But there's also DC terminals. And so you get this little adapter and you can screw in your DC power input and you can screw your leads in here. And then you can just go plug this in. That is next to the reset button. But next to that is another power input for our fourth one, which is we have a management port that can also take PoE in. So you can actually use a power over ethernet switch and power your 125 gig ethernet switch. That's crazy. Now, of course, aside from that out of band management port, you also get a console port and a lot of folks prefer to do console management, but this has a much more expansive management portfolio that we'll get to in a little bit. But the big one, of course, is the ports. And so let's get to that next. Now on the CRS504, you can see that we have four QSFP28 ports. And the easy way to think about these optical connectors is that Q means quad. And so you have four 25 gig, cause it's quad, for 25 gig connections that all get combined to make a 100 gig port. So what the CRS510 is, is they still have two QSFP28 ports for your 100 gig networking. You can of course break those out using breakout cables to four 25 gig ports. But the other thing you have is you have eight SFP28 ports. Essentially, these two blocks are just those quad ports broken out to physically four SFP28 ports. Now, some people will say, oh, the CRS504 is better because it's better just to have the 100 gig ports. Other folks will say the exact opposite. Like, no, it's better to have some breakout and some bigger ports and it really depends on who you are and what you're doing. But let's be clear. The biggest difference in these two switches is how they present those final two QSFP28 ports. Do they, you know, have them physically as one QSFP28 or four SFP28s? And since they look the exact same, I'm just gonna show you the sides of this. Uh, on one side, you have room for rack ears and a little vent. On the other side, you also have room for rack ears. And then in the back, you have two fans. Now this to me is kind of like the one thing that I wish that this switch didn't have is fans. But the good news is since this is a low power device, you tend not to have those fans spin up too, too much. Okay, now looking inside the switch, we can see up front, we have our ports. We also off to the side have our power supplies. In the middle, we have our giant switch chip, and that is a Marvell Prestera. It's a 98DX4310. And essentially what that is, is a 16 port, 
25 gig ethernet non-blocking switch chip, although you do have four of those ports or eight of those ports presented as two 100 gig interfaces. QCA9531, this is not a newer ARM version of the management processor. At the same time, you know, at least there is some management. Now, although those specs are the same as the CRS504, there are some things that are different. A good one is the RAM and like storage space are doubled on the CRS510 versus the CRS504. Now, before we get to our performance, power consumption, all that kind of stuff, let's just talk about price real quickly. So the bottom one, the CRS504 is $799, making it an insane value. The CRS510 is a little bit more at $999 list price. Now, of course, these are MicroTik list prices. So the CRS504 usually is maybe $650 to $700, and the CRS510 is just over $800. Personally, I don't think that the extra, you know, 64 megabytes of RAM or the extra 16 megabytes of flash storage would be worth it for me to upgrade for $150. Like, so clearly that's not what's driving the pricing. What's really driving the pricing is the breakout from the QSFP28 to the SFP28 ports. Now there are folks that are 100% correct that if you have a single rack and you just wanna use QSFP28 to SFP28 breakout cables, that's super easy, super low power, and you can do that without too much issue. And frankly, if that was your usage model for the SFP28 or to get your 25 gig networking, I actually think that the CRS504 is a better option. But on the other hand, a lot of folks have longer distances that those breakout cables really can't deal with. Now, one thing that you could do is of course, you can use a, put an optic, a 100 gig optic with four 25 gig send and receive channels on the CRS504, you put that into the QSFP and then you could use an optical breakout box and then you can go and figure out how to go and get that out to all the different systems that you need. The other option is you just get the higher end switch, you put a $20 optic in there and you're ready to go. So maybe the reason that we didn't review this switch earlier is because the CRS504, a lot of times when we use it, we just use breakout cables. And you can see our review on that, of course, online, we have that, we'll link it in the description. But on the other hand, I totally get why somebody would spend an extra 150 bucks and just say, look, I don't wanna have to deal with that. I just wanna be able to plug optics in, pick which optics I want. I might wanna have some that are longer range optics, short range optics. I may wanna have single mode, multi-mold, whatever, whatever kind of fiber you wanna use, you can get optics that are SFP28 optics, super easy, you can mix and match however you want. And I get why people would do that. And for 150 bucks to have that flexibility, I don't think that that's a crazy premium in any way. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it, but I will also point out the fact that we have bought a lot of the CRS 504s. With that, I think it's time to talk about performance. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of the switch. If you're just like passing basic traffic, you can totally get a total of 800 gigabits, so 400 in each direction across all of the ports, right? You, you do have enough because this is a non-blocking switch and it definitely has enough bandwidth to be able to do that. But something that is really important is that if you don't have a hardware offload path and you're doing like kind of like like some kind of bridging or routing or something like that in this switch. Well, then you're gonna go over that single core 650 megahertz MIPS processor. And the uh, and the performance sucks on that. Let's just call it what it is. Here are MicroTix results doing that. And so this is their vendor, you know, numbers and stuff like that. They're not even getting to a half a gigabit per second. And that is super important because something that you'll find is that the amount of power it takes to go and do routing and stuff at 25 or even really 100 gigabit speeds, you're not gonna do that on a single 650 megahertz ARM or MIPS core, right? You're just never gonna do that. Now, we just did a review of a Snow Ridge processor super micro system that has a, you know, CPU that has built in 25 gig ethernet and that can do firewall. You can go do all that kind of stuff at 25 gig speeds because it has a 16 core 71 watt processor. You know, that's a much higher power processor than this entire switches. So when we go and talk about the management next, I just wanna keep everybody's mind and just kinda of keep everybody level set on the fact that there are a lot of features, but a lot of those features do mean that when you turn them on, if you turn them on on the switch, you're just gonna run out of performance. With that, let's get over to the other set.
Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption of the Switch. Now, if you just go and plug it in and you don't plug any cables in or anything like that, you're gonna see power consumption somewhere in that like 15-ish watt range. It might go up by a watt, down a watt, somewhere in that range though. And so from that 15 watts, Microtik says that the Switch can go up to 27 watts without attachments. So that's really, if you're running something like maybe just running the Switch chip or something like that as hard as you can or something, I don't know. But the maximum rated power consumption is about 45 watts according to Microtik. Now we didn't get quite there, but we got pretty close into that 40 watt range. Now, of course, on a switch like this, a big factor is what kind of optics or DACs or whatever you use. So for example, uh, these are two uh, SR4, so 100 gig SR4, which is short range optics. And uh, you know, if we go plug these QSFP28 modules in, you're gonna see that the power consumption increases quite significantly from that maybe 15-ish watt range and all of a sudden we're now in that 22, 23 watt range. Now what's gonna happen over a little bit of time is these modules are gonna heat up and even without like actually going in and passing a lot of traffic, what will happen is the fans here will spin up. So they went from being pretty much silent and never activating to now they will spin up. And that's important because one of the big things you have to do with these switches, especially 100 gig switches, is you have to cool the optics. Now, when that happens, you would see that the overall noise goes from essentially our 34 dBA noise floor studio when the fans are off, up into maybe 38 to 40, 41 dBA, right? So it goes from, you know, pretty much silent in this case right now to if we let this go for another 30 minutes or so, we'll definitely start to hear these fans ramp, which is important, but we're also gonna start hearing it. Now, it's not a crazy loud switch by any means. It's not like having a 32 port 100 gig 1U switch that's super loud. I do wanna point out that it is notable. Some folks, of course, take the opportunity to do things like Noctua swaps, and you can do whatever the heck you want with this, but uh, we're just using these stock fans. Now, putting this into a little bit of context, just remember that this is only 400 gigabits per second in, for the entire switch, which nowadays is a single NIC. This is a uh, NVIDIA Connect X7 OCP NIC 3.0, and this thing has two 200 gigabit ethernet ports, and so this has you know, essentially the same network bandwidth as this single NIC. Now, the other thing I want to talk about really quickly here is optics. Now, one of the cool things about Microtik switches is that you can use pretty much any kind of optic that you want. We have, uh, I think these are like FS optics, we have Microtik optics, we have uh, 10G Tech optics, we have random CWDM optics, and all kinds of different types of things. We even have 100 gig silicon photonics ones that will work in this. And just to be clear, those can use several watts each. So there's a lot of variability in your overall power consumption just based on what kind of optics you put in here. Of course, the nice thing is that you can go and put whatever kind of optics you want in a switch like this. But one tip that we would have is that because you can kind of pick and find stuff, what I would do is actually look for things that are rated at higher temperature ranges. There are optics that are just kind of like your standard optics. There are other optics that are rated at higher temperature variations. So higher like ambient temperatures, higher uh, operating temperatures, all that kind of stuff. And if you use those kind of higher temperature industrial grade optics or whatever they're called in this switch, it's actually kind of nice because you don't have to worry about them ever burning out because the switch got too hot. This does not have the best optics cooling even with the two fans, so it stays relatively quiet. But on the other hand, I would just personally, if it's only a couple dollars more, I would get the higher temperature rated optics for this. And by the way, using the extended temperature optics is something we're gonna talk more about with servers and stuff, just because even with servers, if you have hot air that goes over this and then kind of heats up your QSFP28 at 56 cages, whatever, you do end up running into an issue with thermals and the higher temperature optics tend to survive much better than the standard range optics. Now, while we have this up, I just wanna point out that there are a number of ways that you can manage this Microtik switch. So one option is that you have the console up front and so you do have a CLI and you can see here that we have the CLI on the screen. The other thing though, is that you can see that we're using the Winbox application. So there's the Winbox application, which is a nice little application that helps you like find these devices on networks, connect to them. And you can also go do all of your configurations. So if you wanna set VLANs, if you wanna go play with QoS or whatever, you can go start doing that in this interface. Now there's also a web management interface that's very similar to this, but it gives you essentially three different ways that you can go manage this kind of switch, which I think is pretty awesome. And they're also just nice little features 
features like you can see here that we have our QSFP 28 optics and you can see the module, module type, all that kind of stuff in this. You can see it's an SR4 optic and it's just super nice to have. Now, of course, one of the challenges with having all of this functionality is that you can't necessarily use it in this switch. Like if you tried doing all kinds of functionality that had to go, like, like layer three plus functionality that had to go from the switch chip to the single core MIPS processor, uh, like that, that functionality is available here, but it's not necessarily gonna run fast path. What you want is only things that have accelerated offload. We'll let you go look those up because those change a little bit over time, but Microtik keeps a list of what is offloaded and switches like this. Hey, I think it's time now to get to our key lessons learned. Okay, with all of these, I love to have key lessons learned. I mean, what do we learn with the switch? Well, like number one, we learned that uh, Rohit and I totally missed getting this switch to go review. I don't know how we managed to overlook it. We literally had like a main site, like, hey, this thing is a new switch, it's out. And I was like, oh, so cool, but we never reviewed it. And uh, maybe we should have. On the other hand, I do think that a lot of folks are gonna end up getting the CRS504 because it is less expensive. But if you do need things like SFP28, you wanna use different optics, you wanna use a mix of DAX and optics and all that kind of stuff sometimes just having the ports already broken out is a lot easier than having to do that mix and match on all of the like qsfp breakouts right so i do totally understand why people would get the switch and frankly if you just want to make your life easier another 150 dollars to go do that especially when you're talking about higher speed switching yeah i get it also something that is probably overlooked in this is the fact that it is so low power that if you want to use it as a desktop switch and have things like maybe your workstation and a nas at 100 gig speeds you may want to have other things like uh, 25 gig speeds or whatever there are a lot of ports here so for folks that have home labs and maybe those home labs have higher speed networking because 25 and 100 gig networking is pretty cheap these days this is a cool switch and of course just the fact that this has so many ways to power it and stuff like that i think it's super flexible and for what it is it's pretty awesome and of course there are folks that are going to want bigger switches i totally get that we've already looked at the microtik crs 518 which has way more so it has another eight two and a half or 25 gig ports and so we've looked at that if you don't need this much power we have an entire series that you can go find linked in the description looking at like 62 and a half gig and 10 gig switches we're going to have more 10 gig and other switches that we're going to do on the sth main site as well as on youtube i just think that this is a cool option and one that we really should have reviewed earlier but i love to hear what you guys think so if you have ideas feel free to put them down below and hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.